Hello, welcome in. Hey, uh, it's great. Question mark. Hmm. Uh, well, have a seat. Sit down. Okay. Let's. Yeah. Let's let's expand on that. Uh, now, when you say great question mark, uh, what's, with, what's with been bothering speed. you? With up speak. That's that's. It's not some. There's like an implied question mark. It's just with up talk. Uh, oh oh. So when you say you're great, yeah. <laughs> Uh, how, how so? Uh, I, sometimes, like, I don't know. I mean, it's just the time of the year, right? You know, everyone's, everyone's down. Everyone's a homebody. Everybody's living in Washington state. <laughs> everyone's getting six hours of sunlight, maybe. Uh, um, yeah. And so you get a lot of time to, like, you know, like think about things and think about like the past, like especially think about like the past, things that happened in the past. Uh, oh, sure. And I don't know, I guess like it's not like things are coming together and making sense. It's kind of like the opposite where it's like things that used to just kind of be there and just accepted now, like, like don't. Makes sense. So what you're saying is there's too much woke in schools nowadays. Is that what you're saying, Jay Bearhead? I I don't know. Does does woke is woke what stopping adult women from having sex with with children? Um, I would say yes. Okay, it, then uh, I would say maybe that we could use a squidge more because I think it's more just like. Man, people talked a lot about that, like, when I was a kid, but, like, not in a bad way, like, in a good way. <laughs> like, people were like, oh, that's so cool. Yeah. And that's kind of, like, weird, <laughs> like, now that I think about it. Like, that's weird, right? Like, that's really, like, weird. My experience of it is a really weird Hall of Mirrors effect, where there is this kind of like shadow world and this kind of you know like everybody on 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 their face if you go into the youtube comments of any mary kay letourneau video on, on youtube just as a random example just as a, just a, pulled that out of your head has no no it, connection to anything else no just kind of thought of that one um right off the dome first first female pedophile you could think of <laughs> <laughs> But if you look at the comments on, like, YouTube or, like, uh, Facebook or, or really any any social media, like, sure, you're going to find arguments about, like, the age of consent or whatever on, on any social media or forum for for um, uh, discussion. Uh, but also, by and large, the most popular emotional reactions are of disgust and sympathy for the victim. Uh you know, and, and uh, these very above the board things. And then you get to the kind of way that people seem to talk about it in real life. And for example, the way that like comedians talk about it. Uh, and it, people have this very lurid pornographic, horny concept of uh, statutory rape. Let's call it what it, <laughs> what it is. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I think that's, why it's so strange to me is because there's like twofold. So like, like again, just pulling a name completely out of a hat for no reason. Uh, you know, Mary, Mary Kay, um, she came out of the closet that we call prison, uh, <laughs> in, in 2004. <laughs> um, yeah. And so, you know, like, she definitely was on people's like minds, I guess, again, when I was in middle school. But I feel like there was other stories also about stuff like that happening in middle school. And people would always be like, you know, if it was like a male teacher predating on like really any, any student, any gender student. Yeah. Um, it, it was kind of rightfully treated as like, that's disgusting that's a horrible abuse. Maybe, you know, you'll have some guys who are like, well, she's 17 in some cases. But generally, 
I feel like within the larger media and comedy and guy discussion of these things, there's an understanding that like, yeah, that that's a line to cross. Yeah. But like, I feel like when the, 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 the victims were male and the perpetrators were female, suddenly a whole lot of either nuance or just guys being like, man, I wish that happened to me. Yeah. I wish I had a teacher mommy milf big titty uh, to uh, groom and control my life for uh, the next two decades. I'm I'm hot for teacher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's like my teacher anime fantasy come to life. I'm not going to consider whether or not, like, immature, childish sexual fantasies from when I was 14 years old might go very differently if they really happened because I they were fantasies I had basically before I knew what sex was. <laughs> I'm not going to hurdle my teenage ass into an emotionally dependent relationship that's going to change all of my relationships with my friends and family in a way that I can't predict, but an adult probably could predict. I'm just going to mentally project on, like, Riverdale high schoolers uh, this concept that, like, all teenagers look and act like they're 25 years old and not that, like, say, a uh, 12-year-old child <laughs> <laughs> very clearly looks like a child. <laughs> <sighs> We're here to talk about May, December, We're aren't we? To, which, God bless this film, probably one of the first times I have ever seen something dealing with this stuff that is actually just, like, without explicitly saying it, depicting, like, middle school aged like, characters in these kind of situations, and just kind of being like, by the way, this is what a middle schooler looks like. <laughs> that scene of uh, Elizabeth scrolling through the like auditions and just being and like getting on the phone with the director and being like they're not sexy enough yeah. you know he was probably really sexy when he was 13 years old it's it's so insane how well they capture like that specific type of brain sickness of just like her literally confronting to her face the fact that 13 year olds look like children and going but I met this guy. He's hot. <laughs> I met this 28-year-old man. He's hot. I met this 30-year-old who, uh, this 36-year-old who acts like a 16-year-old that I imagine was probably hot 20 years ago, I guess. <laughs> uh, it's so completely absurd and uh, perverted and insane. This is... This is my movie of the year. Movie of the year goes to May Bruce's movie of the year award. It really is the tar for uh, straight female pedophiles. This beats Tar's ass, and uh, if you if you're asking me, I mean, I I think that's fair. No, I think that's fair. <laughs> I, I'm kind of thinking it. I mean, I think part of the reason it be, it beats the ass is just because it's a lot more. Um, the condemnations fly fast and thick in this film without ever being uh, preachy. Yeah. Whereas Tar is really more about like kind of a cartoon character of a person, which is real. Yeah. Which is real. People like Lydia Tar absolutely exist and absolutely are cartoon humans. But I think what makes this movie great is that it kind of implicates like it. It fucking is implicating everybody it can implicate including itself yes a hundred percent it's it's like they're shit she's shit she's shit he's shit you're shit i'm shit we're shit like in in the most astute and like beautiful and artful way that it could have possibly put forward i mean like just the 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 dialogue is all so like meaty and so like they get so much across with every single line uh, and just such a stage play uh, type of film in a way that I really, really appreciate. Which is like such a great return to form for Todd Haynes here. And and I think really gets at like how uh, 
game and sensibility sometimes is great for tackling really really thorny things because i feel like this is my read on it like what what is called camp and i don't mean like azalea banks being homophobic on instagram i mean like sure. camp like actual old camp um yeah. comes from this sort of like gay death wish thing of like oh the mel the melon the melancholy of life is so absurd especially when you are like marginalized or victimized in some way that like you kind of can't look at it directly because yes. presenting it directly doesn't even really capture it you kind of have to make it a bit of a joke a bit of a like you have to kind of like make it a little bit more absurd than it actually is to get across how like fucked up it actually is and you see that a lot with like old school camp and why it deals with a lot of like really heavy themes and kind of flippant ways but it's like that flippancy is kind of a way of like getting it across without having to be like too melancholic about it yeah absolutely i mean to, uh, like may december is just another perfect example of movie by a gay guy about women uh where just a searing lens on the structures of misogyny. There is such a structural knowledge here of, of like how women, not, not even so much how they're treated, but like how they have to navigate and how to make like an interesting, horrible woman. <laughs> yeah, no, no, I, I, I think the reason, and also like the, the, the thing, going back to the thing you said, uh, so you were, who who haven't watched the film and are really put off about it. It is very, it is based loosely, but with very overt references to um, the Mary Kay. How do you pronounce her last name? Uh, Mary Kay Letourneau. Letourneau. Yeah. Mary Kay Letourneau. Or Letourneau, if you want to be super French with it. 90s tabloid slash 2000s tabloid uh, focus because she was an adult woman who, uh, groomed and raped a, a child that she worked with <laughs> yes uh or not worked with a child that was like under her care as a as a teacher um and who kind of throughout the entire saga of her life uh insisted that it was consensual and that they loved each other and that she didn't even know it was illegal which is Probably the most insane lie I could think of. <laughs> Just as a side, I like that they kind of put a little bit of that in the film where they make um, Gracie like play up this idea of naivete and then consistently throw in these things that completely undermine her claims to be naive. Oh, absolutely. And there's I mean, like there's a lot of sort of both direct and indirect parallels to real life Mary Kay Letourneau that exist in May, December. For example, um at the end when Julianne Moore is giving those lines like, who was the boss? Who was in charge? Who was the boss? Who was the boss? Who was the boss? That's based on this like uh, infamous interview segment um, where Mary Kay Letourneau is kind of like doing an abuse tactic on camera. Oh, <laughs> oh. I didn't know. I didn't know that was directly from like a thing she did. <laughs> Holy shit. That was, that was quoted from her. It's a crazy, crazy clip. I got to send it to you after we're done recording. Okay. Um, but then also, like, the whole thing about, like, th there's a lot of just, like, inconsistencies, or not strictly inconsistencies with her case, but, like, places where she pretty obviously, like, lied, um, you know, and, and like, uh, for example, like, the letter that was, uh, that, like, uh, Natalie Portman reads, uh, toward the end of the film, it's very, like, Something similar to that happened where it's like, oh, they looked in Mary Kay Letourneau's like love letters or her diary or some shit. And it was just like, oh, she definitely knew what she was doing was like at least going to be perceived as wrong slash illegal. Yeah. Like I said, like just a, an insane attempt of a lie to be like, oh, I didn't know that was illegal. It's like, what? <laughs> that's like, <laughs> that's like the first thing you learn is illegal. <laughs> <laughs> God, I did not know about that that interview thing. I mean, it make, and it makes sense. I I that the film would would draw from this case especially because it's probably the most famous and documented one. Um, also very funny since the film 
it's very critical of making a say a movie based on this the events that happened in it. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the way there's like these tiny little editing and musical cues that are like TV movie ass fucking moments. My God, leading to the final scene being on this set of the most TV movie ass looking film I've ever seen. <laughs> It's genius. It's, it's so good. It's pure, it's pure genius. And I do have to, like, I know I said, I, I called this flippantly a movie by a gay guy, uh, but Sammy Burt's the screenwriter, is a woman. Uh, oh, I don't know. That's really good. Uh, which is cool, yeah. She did, she did uh, really good. I, I, I forgot that Todd Haynes doesn't write his movies. <laughs> <He's just> like, <laughs> hey, um, hey, you want to hear the insane next movie that she wrote get Um, get don't click don't click guess before we go anywhere else guess what project they brought this they brought her straight from may december onto uh the warren jeffries biopic uh coyote versus acme awesome Awesome! From, oh, that's in what, development hell too. From one slapstick to another, <laughs> <laughs> one comedy movie to the next. Hey, th- I mean, same shit, right? Right. Ky- like <laughs> fucking May December. The fucking Joe in May December might as well be fucking slamming a mallet on top of his head throughout the movie. God. Oh, the scene. The scene where he like smokes with his dad. <laughs> Like, smokes a cigarette with his dad and, like, looks like a 15-year-old trying to smoke a cigarette. That, oh, God. I, obviously, Julianne Moore and Natalie Portman, like, uh, I'm, I'm sure everyone in the world has sung their praises. But, like, everything about Charles Melton's, like, physicality and the way he presented this, like, arrested development character, uh was so utterly spectacular the the scene at the end of the movie where he's like physically completely like locked up and triggered and like trying to talk to her about their relationship uh was just like ugh, ugh. and she just like immediately turns it on him and then you see the next day and he's just like playing dad yeah playing dad and like crying the entire time that he's doing it <laughs> Just silent, just crying, crying his way through it. Uh, and and like all of his like his his weird relationship with his dad and just like the strained nature of everything. I also want to just f- for a moment, the side characters are the fucking best characters in this movie. This film is has a lot of just great cast, great great cast, great set of characters, great yeah. ensemble. Georgie is my favorite character. It's my two favorite characters are Georgie and Honor, uh, uh, for for completely different reasons. Georgie is her her son from the previous marriage, right? Yeah, the he's one who's the just like the fail son. <laughs> he's the bisexual fail son singer in a bar, uh, who like tries to bribe Elizabeth as uh, to to like let him be the music producer for the movie which he <laughs> which he appears to believe just means that he makes like a mixtape for the film yeah <laughs> it's so fucking funny he's he's the greatest he has and and the fact like he has such a central like purpose in the story toward the end of the film uh I I don't know, just, like his character is just really spectacular and uh, super magnetism magnetizing, whatever you want to call it. Uh, and then Honor is just this like kind of wiser, like older sister to these two twins who are just like still being kind of abused by their mother. <laughs> yeah, Oof. and just like sees through everything and is just talking mad shit the whole time. A really intense and, like, smart focus on, like, kind of the way something like this uh, affects other people and the way that, like, Gracie is, like, presents this front of being incapable of even thinking about how her behavior affects other people. 
God, the scene when she just has the fucking meltdown because the 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 person doesn't want cakes from her anymore. Oh my god. Their mother is sick. Who cares? God, it doesn't matter. Just I just like just like like he's like okay, it's fine. And then she's like but then like like I can never like just like total like everything in my life is wrong because there's one less cake I have to make. And just like how that's the payoff for this scene where they're like yeah, people just kind of do that to like keep her busy. <laughs> <laughs> Like, nobody needs that many cakes. They're just being fucking nice to her, but it's like her whole... Ugh. It's like her whole sad little uh, dollhouse life situation. It's so funny. that the These people have to move to take care of their, like, dying parent. And she's like, I wasted three hours! They're not even gonna eat it! Just lo- losing her mind at not only wasting three hours, but this idea that, like, now that that's one last cake she doesn't have to do, like, she has to face the yawning void <laughs> in her heart, <laughs> I guess. It's a real Tony Collette in Hereditary moment yeah. there. Ugh. I am a gog at how evil <laughs> Natalie Portman plays Elizabeth. It's so fucking awesome because obviously with like a gorillas in the mist kind of like thing like this you're gonna want her to be the straight man character yeah but she's so not she's like exactly as evil as gracie (laughs) like (laughs) like that's what's great about her is that she's like super manipulative as well is constantly like also trying to do like seeing their characters bounce off each other where they both speak in plausible deniabilities the way that she kind of starts to like she tries to kind of like uh, like obviously there's this whole thing where she's trying to kind of like become gracie and this very like persona inspired um sort of way Oh yeah, and uh, her makeup very over the course, like her makeup and styling over the course of the film, my boyfriend notices like is literally like she just starts to look more and more like Gracie. Like she yes. start like is still clearly and which is funny because then at the end of the film in the TV movie, she looks nothing like Gracie. <laughs> <laughs> so she was just doing all that for herself. Yeah. Uh it's it's insanely funny. Uh, it's insanely funny that the ER style show that she's an actress on is called Nora's Ark. Oh, I forgot about that. Uh, that shit is fucking awesome. Uh, a- and yeah, just her, her like the way she talks to men, just overall, <laughs> and like she's such an she's such her own like portrait of like a woman navigating through. Uh, patriarchy or whatever the fact that everybody's like cheating on somebody with her seemingly oh yeah i forgot about that there's like the detail that it's like every she she absolutely her her evil thing is that she she likes taking married men (laughs) (laughs) uh and i guess like these kind of these kind of like um sort of rapturous acts of of like character work or whatever like her pretending to be fucked in the back of the pet store oh yeah uh, yeah completely hilarious she's i i think that's the thing about her character that's great is that it's like she does these it does, she does these things that like at the start of the film just kind of make her come off a little like Okay, but be se- be come on, be serious. Like, <laughs> like, like you're playing like a movie that's like, and you're like kind of at like really close to something that's like pretty pretty fucked up, and you're not really taking it seriously. And then as the movie goes on, it's just it's like, oh no, she is taking it seriously. She's just like about it. <laughs> <laughs> she just thinks it's like cool. <laughs> she's like she's taking it actually way too seriously. Yeah, she needs to like tone down the taking it seriously a little the way she has like the same she kind of circumnavigates around the same complexes that gracie kind of suffers from uh and like doesn't really doesn't also recognize how weird it is for her to be like yeah i like playing complex characters that's why i'm playing your mom yeah 
No, exactly. <laughs> just like, oh, well, she doesn't even just say complex. She's like, oh, isn't it like fun to play characters that are like a little evil? And then it's like, again, like the, the, the plausible deniability. It's just like, why are you so upset that I said that? What did I say something to upset you? You seem really upset that I said I love playing evil characters and that it's fun to play a character who's evil. Uh, in in it as I am hanging out with you, doing research to play you, <laughs> doing Ugh. research to play you before a massive audience. Also, another another like small thing. There's a lot of like little small things to notice. Um, as with any movie that you can see with your eyeballs, uh, but uh, Elizabeth's parents, she says that they study ep- epistemic relativism. Yeah. Uh, which, according to Google, is the thesis that there are no epistemic norms over and above the variable epistemic norms operative in different local cultural settings or contexts. Uh, I didn't know what that meant. Until uh, just now. Oh, so basically, like, okay, I get it. Like, relative, yeah, kind, like, kind ah. of like morality norms are are, are agreed upon. Uh, you know, uh, which is a kind of like part and parcel with her like funny fascination with Grace of being like, oh my god, she's so clean slate every day. She doesn't like regret anything. And and by the way, that scene. Of, like, that scene of the, like, flower arrangement and, like, Grace totally overpowering her flower pot. Yeah. And just being like, oh, you just sit around all day and you, like, think about stuff that you did. Yeah. (laughs) That's weird. (laughs) So, so fucking funny. That's such a funny, like, I, I think what I like on it, too, is that it implies that, like, Gracie herself is also kind of emotionally stunted. Oh, absolutely. Uh, which, yeah. which to an extent makes uh, Natalie Portman's character like almost more sinister because she's a lot more like cognizant. Not not to downplay or excuse obviously Gracie's character because Gracie's character is shown to be pretty pretty aware of what she's doing as well at, at various moments. Oh um, yeah, she's a total control freak. Yeah, she she's absolutely also is like fully aware of what she's done and is a bit of a sociopath about it. Um, but Gracie is 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 shown to be a lot more just kind of like willing to go there and not care, whereas Gracie obviously is a lot more feels a lot more like ooh I I. I, I don't want I don't want people to think bad of me. Yeah. Yeah. Like she's definitely uh, Elizabeth's a lot more I would I guess I would say cavalier. Uh she's she's more um I don't know, she's she's very city girl. <laughs> she's so like I don't care. This is what grown-ups do. Oh, God. God. Oh, what a... Probably easily the most evil line in all of history. (laughs) (laughs) Like... Just like, you bitch, you know what you fucking said. (laughs) (laughs) Don't give me Uh, no, don't give me no, like, bull... You fucking know what you're saying when you said that. Yeah. I I mean, to, to not clock, like... To not clock Joe's, like, emotional reality and, and the way that he's going to, like, respond uh, and, and you know, kind of be very teenager about the whole thing uh, in, in a way that's, like, not even wrong of him, you know? It's like, I, I don't know. I, you feel so much. It, this film definitely, like... Kind of is is a vote of confidence to all the people who feel like a sense of, uh, I I I don't want to say pity, but just like compassion and empathy for um Vili Falau, I guess, or and like you know victims of victims of grooming and and sexual abuse, uh, like, and I think to be able to be able to do that in such a like three dimensional way uh is 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 very 
it, it's 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 praiseworthy and it's very cool. Yeah. No, I would I would call the movie praiseworthy. I think I <laughs> I think it's a good movie. <laughs> I think it's pretty good. Um, but no, because it's like it it it. I I think for uh, because we mentioned this before, a gay man, but it's like specifically a gay man to make a movie about uh essentially national obsession with with sex crimes and pedophilia and the ways that it's kind of like treated as a plausible deniability outlet for for maybe less than ideal desires uh yeah, at this specific time yeah at this specific point in time very it feels very uh very pointed <laughs> too i i, I will yes. say <laughs> yes uh completely like it's it's holding a mirror up to society and what it says is that everybody's full of fucking goddamn shit uh a lot of people who um I, I, I think to insinuate or or to use to use grooming as a sort of political gotcha for any one group as it seems to be kind of getting deployed on <clears throat> uh homosexuals <laughs> to a degree that is uh kind of unfair and also delusional. Uh you know, you really gotta you really got to think about where the sausage is made in terms of just like gro- the the compulsions toward grooming and sexual assault. Got to really think about the patriarchy, I hate to say it. Yeah. Going to have to start reading a little bit of feminist theory around these parts. I would say that like the film is especially interrogating kind of both the historic Nancy Graceification of sex crimes and yeah. and definitely the modern uh Nancy Graceification of sex crimes. Yeah. And the way that like the way that the conversation has like aged uh and and I don't know, just kind of like the weight of the past or you know, sort of the recent past, I get I guess. Uh just because, like, that shit, that shit happened a little while ago at this point, which is weird to think about, because, like, I do remember it, more or less, as, as, like, a kind of contemporary fervor. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, no, it was, it was, like I said, it was everywhere. And I mean, like, there's also the, like, other forms of culturally acceptable pedophilia that, like, were super prevalent in the same time frame. Oh yes, absolutely. Yeah. The 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 everyone is familiar with the the like countdown clocks for like the Olsen twins or Britney Spears. Uh, yeah, you know, there's there's a lot of ways in which like the the rules, for lack of a way to put it, of pedophilia don't apply to heterosexuality. Actually, like a, a, another movie that I would put this film in conversation with on stuff like that is oddly enough. Um, Happiness by Todd Sullins, the other oh, Todd, really? the other Todd, um, <laughs> specifically because there's a sequence in it. So one of the main characters in that film is is like a a pedophile who preys on child like boys, um, and there's a scene in the film early on when basically the ca- kid that he ends up grooming he gets pointed to by the kid's father because the kid's father is like look at the way he's like throws that ball like look at the way he's like eating his food like my kid's like a fucking it like i gotta stop i gotta stop this somehow and then he just he just like openly is like i should buy him a prostitute and the the character who's a pedophile (laughs) is like he's 12 (laughs) and the dad just goes you're right it's probably too late Ugh. 
And oh, it's like, God. of course, later when, you know, it turns out that like it comes out that they, that um, I think it's Bill Pullman. I forget the actor. But when it comes out that he's he's like groomed this kid, it's th- that dad calls him and is like, I'm going to fucking kill you. And it's so like it's not commented on the film, but it's so like literally the entire reason he targets this kid is because the dad talked about pay- paying an adult woman to have sex with him. <laughs> Oh my fucking god! Bro. Like just brilliantly subtle little way of just like, hey, <laughs> kind of fucked up that like the first thing that guy said was normal, but the consequential action of that is like is correctly seen as fucked up and evil. Yeah, that's just that's just nuts. People are fucking nuts, and that shit's like also super common. I know that there's been like multiple celebrity interviews uh about like you know be about like being like oh yeah you're a man now 13 years old uh yeah let's go get you some pussy like that's that it's it's an insanely like common thing and common approach with with teenaged men or or other such categories of mar of not marginalized people but other such categories of people who are not extended the same expected grace of childhood yeah that's a that's a big thing god it was it was really heartbreaking to watch uh one of the final shots of the movie of of um joe watching his kids have like a normal graduation uh (laughs) unencumbered by court cases and national tabloid attention uh which is not to say like you know completely and totally normal but like yeah you know comparatively no no it's it, it's him crying because it's like it, it it's so obviously that it's both like you know a father's pride like there's my kids grown all grown up and like the recognition of like oh i didn't get that <laughs> oh there's a very oh i basically didn't get that because of why these kids exist <laughs> <laughs> The fucking crash zoom in the opening film on Julianne Moore or Gracie being like, I don't think we have enough hot dogs. Do 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 fucking fucking made me like lose it. So like I I I know I mentioned this before about camp, but like I it cannot be undersold how much this is like a gut uh 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 funny movie that you do not want to laugh at. Yeah. Uh, there's a person who, there's a person I follow on Twitter who is describing an experience, um, at a screening where some guy got up and was yelling at everybody for laughing and just screaming about how May December is not a comedy. If I, if I can find that that's sweet that is so funny because it's like i get i i've i've had that experience of like people laughing and me being like it's not a fucking comedy but like bro it's a todd haynes movie (laughs) (laughs) it's a comedy (laughs) that shot specifically like that happens at the beginning of the film where it's like this enormous piano riff crash zoom hyper dramatic and then Audio cuts out. Julianne Moore. I don't think we have enough hot dogs. Like, unmistakably, like, the comedy moment of the year. Yeah. No, it is it is supposed... That is absolutely supposed to be funny. It's so fucking... Like, h- hilarious throughout. Um, the, the, the way, like, he can make a scene both gut-wrenching and also hilarious, uh, with the classic one being... Um, uh joe getting way too high on the roof with his son. so fucking funny and just like i'm sorry this is probably a traumatic memory for you <laughs> <laughs> oh my god so it's fucking like... funny <laughs> oh god it's just everything it's skin crawling it like it's so like but it, it's like tragic and, and it's so hurtful and it hurts your heart but like all in the same way, like all of the scenes of like the parental abuse on her kids, where like, uh, and you know, great acting moments from all of these kids, where like the the two like fraternal twins, 
the the scene where they're trying on dresses for under the robes oh, and they're like God. she's like nitpicking her about the sleeve length and calling her fat and all this shit the, the and then doing it in that way that's like shaming without sh- like explicit like like the, the line is something like oh you know like when i was your age i wouldn't have been brave enough to like not wear sleeves because yeah like, people would see how fat my upper arms were yeah the fakest like, compliment yeah the fake it, the most like okay well i'm not gonna get what i want from you by telling you that you shouldn't wear that so i'm instead gonna like dig at your like literally child like teenager like child like self-esteem i know and like the same shit with the sun like just being like you need to drink your milk. Everyone at college is going to think you're so scrawny and you skipped a grade because you're so fucking small and you're like a small little baby boy God. and you're not big and sexy like your 14-year-old father was when I Jesus. went after his ass. Oh. It's it's just like... Ah! It's like every relationship is like so affected by this and by like just... Gracie's like complexes and uh, every every relationship has to be like a power struggle for her. <laughs> Joe's thing about butterflies and like releasing butterflies free uh, into the world and uh I don't know, you know, so go go watch a YouTube essay. Anyone can talk about the symbolism here. I uh, even just like the obvious narrative thing of like the person he's talking to about butterflies who's clearly the only person who's ever shown like just interest in him and his interests without yeah. some weird ulterior motive and then he gets his heart broken because she reminds him that he's married yeah oh god he's doing this like seventh grader version of cheating on his wife where he's just like i think i like you let's what if we what if we went to spain together to see the butterflies let's go look at the butterflies you you're nice to me even you're nice to me and that works on me yeah and that, <laughs> like i i think that probably had much more to contribute to the scene near the end where he confronts her than uh fucking natalie portman's dumbass like that obviously like gets under his skin and pisses him off and like fucks him up but it's so obvious that like the thing that's kind of getting him to question his relationship more is like seeing feeling a a, what a nicer relationship to another adult could be like to an to somebody who's actually an appropriately aged adult (laughs) um yeah and probably also seeing Elizabeth and Gracie interact and just being like, I don't like it. I don't like either of these women. <laughs> I mean, and just like between uh, and, and like, I th- I think Elizabeth's affair with him kind of contributes to it in the sense that I think he sees her as, I mean, he really probably, you know, in spite of what Gracie says, because Gracie is kind of just full of shit all the time. He probably, Joe probably sees everybody as, like, more adult and, like, experienced than him, which uh, seems to kind of influence a lot of, like, how he talks to other people and, like, how he carries himself. Uh, And so there's this just, like, feeling that, like, this is his one life and maybe he did it wrong. (laughs) Yeah. Which is like, I don't know, that's, that's fair and sad. Maybe he should get into polyamory. <laughs> I I don't think Gracie would, I don't think Gracie would go for that. <laughs> for some reason. I love, I love also the part at the end where, like, uh, Elizabeth is like trying to help him by giving him advice and she's just like, Oh, she'll be fine. And he's like, no, she won't. <laughs> she actually won't is the thing. Such a searing and, and smart portrait. It's and, and fucking just hilarious and entertaining and so juicy. Uh, because, hey, at the end of the day, we're shit too for looking. Yeah. And that's I mean, they that's really how the movie even ends is like it ending with the creation of another film like itself and just being like. 
Hey, look familiar? Isn't this disgusting? Yeah. <laughs> Why did it's, you want to watch this movie? It isn't this lurid? Doesn't this make you feel cheap? Doesn't it? Doesn't the focus on you know these types of 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 dalliances and sexual relations and broken families and trauma? Isn't that you know? And there's there's the great line he has where he just gets mad and he's like story and she's like you know what I mean because that's like what it really is it's just that it's like you know the 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 creation of 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 traumatic life experiences or just experiences that like have completely encapsulated a person's entire life being simmered down into uh, gossip and lurid tabloid display and. Uh, tv movie uh, by the way still so funny how much she's like justifies so much about wanting to get to know gracie's character better and just the movie they're making is the like least interrogative possible fucking movie Corn. for what it looks like like it just like doesn't look anything like her doesn't act anything like her despite like acting like her a lot over the course of the film it's just like yeah it's just basically porn and she's just justified spending all this time with the family for that oh my like it's so perfect that it's an obama era film because i feel like post post pandemic you are not getting like a paid research trip for this dog shit lifetime movie that like is gonna suck. I, I mean, like, I, I I know that it's part of her, like, sugar daddy experience with this director and, and her great line about how the crew wrap sweatshirts are gonna have to turn into crew wrap mugs and shit. God. God, she's insane. She's so... She's so evil. She's so evil. She's so goddamn good. Um... Uh, but yeah, like, I don't know just 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 funny to me that that and and uh kind of kind of indicative of it taking place in 2015 while we were ta- getting ready to prepare for this episode i remembered the funniest thing about this about about everything related to this uh uh-huh. so the original mary Kay um story did take place here in beery in washington not here yeah. but in Burien, but here in washington uh, and the payoff to this is in 2020. <laughs> um, as many as many of you know. Uh, oh my God! In in 2020, uh, Mary Kay died of colorectal cancer. Or maybe you don't know. That. I she's dead. I see. Well, I, I dead just as, remembered where this is going. She's dead as a door now. But she died in yeah, 2020. She, she, specifically, she died July 6th, 2020. That's relevant because if people don't quite remember that would have been at the height of uh the george floyd protests specifically yes. this this may seem like it's going what you're like where the fuck is this going trust me <laughs> it is going somewhere <laughs> if you're a listener of our podcast you'll want to know so july 6th that's the height of the george floyd protests specifically the big ones in seattle washington we famously had Chaz, all of this stuff, huge conflicts. The Seattle Police Department fucking abandoned their police station and placed a, a 12 pack of Gatorade inside like a fucking Elmer Fudd trap. Yeah, um, they uh, this was after they had chemically they basically used the like a chemical weapons amount of like mace pepper spray. Uh, oh, they, they, people people like got the things and they were like expired like tear gas from like like military grade tear gas from I think Israel. It was definitely yeah. something where people were like, "Whoa, this is this is getting crazy." Um, yeah, enough to fog the neighborhood and get into apartments above that area, and like you know, affected kids and like families and stuff. But yeah. you know, and whatever. made it so you could actually get an apartment on the hill again <laughs> <laughs> because hey, they, people you know? fucking fled left and right after that. I hey, <laughs> blue lives are keeping the rent down, huh? Uh, you've heard of you've heard of going out and firing a few shots off to get the rent down. Get get tear gas. That'll keep the rent down. Um, <laughs> but throughout all this, our our star of the show, Carmen Best, chief of C- police, Seattle chief police. of Seattle Police Department, giving the sloppiest, worst like uh, speeches, like left and right, constantly just like like. Like saying shit like 
we are not going to tear gas protesters. And then like two hours later, tear gassing protesters. Like, yeah, one of the like most audacious, absurd, absurdly like mad of power police police captains. July 6th. <laughs> Mary Kay uh, Letur- Letourno? Like, Letourno. Letourno was a teacher who became a tabloid fixture in the late 1990s after she raped a 13-year-old student and later married him after serving a, pl- a prison sentence. She has died at age 58. The New York Times, 15 minutes ago. Immediately under that, a reply within 15 minutes from Chief, Chief Carmen Best. Sad about this. <laughs> Rip. So if you are wondering about the preview image for this episode <laughs> of the podcast, your question has now been answered. Uh, our police chief at the he- at the height of getting all this like attention and flack and focus on her because of the her handling of the protests, uh, decided to take time out from uh, police brutality. <laughs> To say, man, I'm real torn up that this 58-year-old woman, who in the post I'm replying to, reminder, raped a 13-year-old, and that's what she's famous for, died today. <laughs> she That bitch got off the stage of a press conference and venerated a pedophile. Yeah. On, on social media for for all of us to see and like not that even a pedophile crazy. she had to like that it wasn't like a fucking like politician yeah <laughs> like bill clinton didn't fucking die like it's <laughs> you don't have to, you don't have to give your opinion on this woman <laughs> jay will literally like someone will cancel plans in a group chat and jay will respond sad oh, about yeah, this, sad about this like, <laughs> because i was like obsessed with it because it's like the most insane like already extremely funny for a police chief to tweet that about a convicted uh again child rapist in in yes. her own state but so much funnier to tweet that at that point in time when literally the whole world is watching you <laughs> When, and any other time, no one's going to be combing through your replies or your likes or whatever, but it is the 2020 protests. You see what's happened. It's a war out there. It was literally a war. The cops waged war on people, on us. And, and the generals are out there being like, oh man, she was really a trailblazer fucking that kid. <laughs> She was so... R.I.P. to so a real one. <laughs> R.I.P. Pouring one out for her. This, Carmen, you know Carmen Best was getting those fucking cakes delivered. Oh my <laughs> god. She might have been. She could have been. She w- it was all local. All that shit was local. She might have known Mary Kay. I can't. I literally can't think of any other reason to respond like that. Unless you personally <laughs> knew her. Ugh. I mean, yeah, or unless you want to, like, play the victim and be like, well, everybody is so mean to me. I knew right. her, and she was a complex <laughs> figure, and blah, 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 Extremely funny if she, instead of saying the sad about this R.A.P., just the day it happened, pulled the, like, someone I know just died today. I, I don't want to talk to anyone. Turns her profile black. <laughs> <laughs> Turns her profile black and locks it. Nobody talk the- to me. Somebody I know just died today. <laughs> <laughs> The Nateri, I I hear of great news on your world or whatever. <laughs> oh uh, God! But yeah, now 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 you know why that's our thing. And if you ever uh, see me post the screenshot of Carmen Vesic sad about this R.A.P. that she was responding to the bitch from May December dying. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, isn't life grand? What a rich pageant! Yeah, you know what. I think everything's gonna be okay. Not yeah. not for the actual Joe. I'm sure the actual Joe is not doing very well. <laughs> I'm not gonna look it up. I'm not gonna pry into his privacy. I did see while looking at the article earlier that he's a professional DJ, so that's a terrible sign. <laughs> that's... <laughs> I'm gonna keep my mouth shut. <laughs> um, Godspeed to him. I hope that's I hope that's going well. Okay, I will say a month before her death, he did say apparent according to people 
that he sees things clearly now and he realizes that this wasn't a healthy relationship from the start. Yes, they did like divorce and they had like, you know, very, very many different like stages of separation. Yeah. Uh, uh, and uh, when she died, they apparently got to say a lot of things uh, that they hadn't been able to say to each other, which is a thing I shouldn't know. But, you know, he likes to make those TV appearances, which is like all well and good and fine. I get it. Bro, I can't think of any... You know something is wrong in your life if the first Wikipedia citation on your... Uh, first citation on your Wikipedia is your certificate of death hosted as a PDF at TMZ. That's just bad. Yeah. It's bad. It's bad. It's things, bad. things went bad. Went, went, went bad for you somewhere. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, boy. Well... I hope you're I hope you're feeling better. I, I, I hope you're instead of just feeling great, you're now feeling great. Yeah, I, I think I'm feeling I'm feeling pretty OK about it all. Uh-huh. I think things are going to work out just fine. <laughs> Last session, your your insurance canceled. So, oh, uh, you're actually in, you're actually in several thousand dollars worth of debt now. Oh, jeez, Uh, that. Do you take check? You're going to have to talk to my lawyer about this. Uh, sad about this. <laughs> sad about this. R.I.P. R.I.P. Yeah, <laughs>